Well, as you can see, I'm fishing. There's a surprise. I'm fishing on Rook Lake at Rookery Waters, which is in front of the cabins, just to the, the right of the calf. And having a little cheeky session on catching these. Mainly rud. Should be some roach thrown in. I'm fishing on the waggler. There's a few pleasure anglers on here today. And it is a lovely way to catch fish. I'm fishing maggots because it's easier in maggots. But if I was to fish caster, I'd probably get bigger fish. I'm fishing one of my slim plastics. Uh, probably I'd say at about 25 yards out, 20, 25 yards out, loose feeding maggots, because it's very effective maggots, you'll catch everything on it, but where it's, it's still just warming up, um, you know you're gonna get bites. But the most important thing is how I've shotted the float, size hook, line diameters, and the feeding. That's the most important thing, is the feeding. As you'll see, I'll be feeding regularly a few maggots, probably about 10 or 15, spreading them on an area out there. And I've only got, and I'll show you the setup in a minute, I've got four number 10 slots just down the line, spread down the line. That one, and I'm looking to catch through the water. I'm fishing probably about five, five foot deep. I've got a tree above me, I've got to be careful. Five to six foot deep, single maggot, as you can see there. I've got a 18, 18 hook on. cast, just check it before the float lands so my hook bait goes past my float in a straight line. I missed that one. The bites are very quick. The trouble is if I let it land in a heap and don't strain it out I won't see the bite because there's too much slack line for this to move about and it won't register. So if I cast out, stop the float and the hook bait goes past it, I'm direct to the float then to see the bite. So I cast out, stop it, the float lands nearest to me and the hook bait goes past it. And as she starts to wait up, far out, pouch a maggot, 10 to 15 maggots, and they are bite straight. I'm looking for the bite straight away. And I'll see it. If I let the float land in the heap, I won't see the bite. Using a 13 foot rod, or 13 foot one inch to be precise. And catching loads of these lovely, lovely rud. Look at that beautiful fish, all fit and can hardly hold him still. Beautiful mint condition. All right, let's catch one more and I'll show you the float and the rod and the reel. These little 3000 Matrix Horizon. So not a big reel, don't need a big reel. Balances to the rod nice. But most of them keep them maggots going in. Just keep that regular feed. I felt that one. That might have been a carp, because obviously there's carp in here. That felt solid. Yeah, maggots not tail. I reckon that was a carp got hold of that. But you can sit here. On this Rook Lake at Rookery Waters and catch a fish a chuck. Just simply doing what I'm doing on any of these pegs round here. Check the maggots all right. It's quite careful with this tree. 
Like I say cast, just check the float so the hook bait goes past it. So if a fish picks up my maggot as it's dropping down now and it's a very light on the drop, they are see the bite straight away. I could probably set it at two foot now and catch, but it's better fishing deeper because you get a more natural fall. And I'm falling through more water where my hook baits, my uh, loose feed. So my hook bait is falling with my loose feed. Look at that, beautiful. I have a lovely, lovely rud. I've had a few roach, but it's mainly rud you'll catch. You've got a chance of an odd skimmer. And obviously, you could hook a carp. But what a lovely way to fish. Nice and busy. Keep them maggots going in. Very important, I've got the float really shotted down. There's not loads out of the water. Now, yeah, that's a better one. It is a lovely way to fish. Especially when the rivers are flooded as well. I should net that really, but I'll... No, I will net that. I was going to swing it, but I'll net it. The colours in there, absolutely beautiful, these fish. Look at him, absolutely mint condition. Look at the colours in his fins. Look at the red there. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful fish. Let me show you my setup now. Well, I've just unhooked that. The reel. If you can see there, the spool's a bit dirty, but it's a Ryzen 3000. Loaded up nicely, just under the lip. The rod, Horizon Pro, the waggler, 4 metres, 13, point, um, 13 foot 1 inch. Main line is 016. Horizon again. 08 hook length. To an 18 hook, MXC5, one of the uh, barbless matrix hooks. And now I've got one, two, three, four, number 11 shots down the line. And then my float. You need a float heavy enough to cast with ease. It's no good trying to whack out a little light float because you won't get the presentation right. But having a float just heavy enough, you can cast it easy check it like I've said so the float lands and then the hook bait goes past it I'll just pop that shot in there it's just come loose let me just pop that in there because obviously with these safe shots you're using I always put a piece of silicon on the line so it's let me take one off I'll show you you see that piece of silicon on the line there what it does with this safe shot, they're so harsh to the line that I put that inside, as you can see there, inside the shot, bite that on, and I know that's soft enough on the line not to damage it. There's my float, one of my plastic plastic slims, two plus one gram. In fact, I've just dotted the top, you see it's, it's fading a little bit, with this piece of black. Just with a pen, just so I can see. In fact, I'll show you that tip now. Little tip there. Look, I can just um, blacken that up a little bit more. Just with a marker pen. I can just blacken that tip like that. And I'll be able to see that better out there in the white water, just for for my bites. Look at that, lovely. I'd imagine the depth out there is probably eight, nine foot, might be ten foot out there I'm fishing. But I've got that set probably at about six foot. And although probably you'd probably catch two foot deep. It's better fishing deep because you're falling through the water more, all amongst my loose feed, and you get a much slower fall. 
And if that falls and wakes up quickly at two feet, perhaps the fish might, oh, I might not take that. But with it, a more natural fall through the bait, a longer fall, you'll get a bite, hopefully, each chuck in. So let's see, so, cast it, just stop it, so as it throws the hook bait past the flat, if it's in a straight line, so the slightest touch by a fish on my hook bait, there we are, straight away. If I just cast it and left it, I wouldn't have seen that bite because the fish has moved and because everything's straightened out, the float goes straight under, even though we're six foot. If I cast in, it landed in a pile, I wouldn't see the bite as the fish grabbed the, the maggot and sh shoots off. Oh, that's pulled off that one. But just very important, just keeping that rhythm. Casting out, check it. Picking up that catapult, firing in. 10 or 15 maggots all the time because you're building a rhythm up with the fish feeding. Very much like if you're catching fish or carp, catching them shallow where you're losing casters or pellets, you've just got to keep that rhythm up. Otherwise you go out of a rhythm, the fish can go wandering. So there we have it, a lovely way to spend a session catching silvers one a bunk.